Hello, everyone. My name is Emily. I wish to share my awful stepmother story, whom I will call Julie. I would never call her anything else due to her motherly attitude. She never acted like one and never wanted to try. My dad's name is Jacob, and I met Julie when he introduced her to me. Hey, Emily, I want you to meet Julie. She told me never to call her my mom. I complain for you to even think that she could be your mom. You are only my husband's daughter, except your reality. You are a teenager, and I do not wish to do anything for you. I replied, that is okay, Julie. I can handle myself. I just wish for my dad to be happy. I will not bother you. She shot back, you're already in the way, you little witch. Don't try to act smart with me. I know how to handle worthless teens like you. Once you turn 17, I'll make sure you're out of our lives so I can have Jacob all to myself. The conversation got nasty really fast. Julie said some horrible things about me and my late mother. My dad was a widower, and my mom passed away when I was just seven years old. I miss her a lot, and it took my dad a long time to start dating again. That's one reason why I never told him about Julie's terrible words or behavior. Looking back, it was a big mistake to stay quiet because Julie became a nightmare after she married my dad. Even my dad was surprised by her behavior. Julie always targeted me and tried her best to kick me out of the house. She made it clear that she hated kids and didn't want me around. She never told my dad this before they started dating. When my dad refused to abandon me, she began to find ways to make my life miserable. She would ruin her own food and blame it on me. She'd say, look at what your daughter did, Jacob. She spoiled my cooking because I refused to cook for her. She's going to poison me one day. Then my dad would ask, Emily, what's your explanation for this? Dad, I swear I don't know anything about this. I'm happy to cook my own food. I wasn't even home before you came back. I got takeout to eat in my room, I said, trying to explain. Julie interrupted, Oh God, she's lying, Jacob. You need to get rid of her before she kills me. This was just one example of what Julie had been doing for the past five years. This whole mess was over too much salt in her food, which she had added herself just to blame me. It was crazy, but Dad believed me because I had enough proof over the years. She did much worse. She cut off my phone connection, locked me out of the house for eight hours, took my car keys on the day of an important test, and even threw away a project I had worked on for a week. Dad tried his best to make Julie understand that her actions were not okay, but she never listened. She would act nice for a few days, and then do something terrible again. By the time Julie had been with us for a year, I got a job and started paying for my own things. I wanted to avoid any interference from her in my life. Dad was upset, but I told him it was good for me to have my own money. I didn't want him to feel guilty. Julie, being a stay-at-home wife, considered Dad's money as her own and didn't want to spend much on me not even for basic needs. I tried to stay out of her way as much as possible, hoping she'd leave me alone. But she never got the hint and kept bothering me. She was determined to get rid of me from her life and the house, but she had no idea what was coming. The big drama happened a few weeks after my 17th birthday. Since then, Julie had been in a great mood, often singing happily around the house. I knew why she was so cheerful. She thought she could finally get rid of me. Little did she know, I had overheard her talking to her friend on the phone about how she planned to kick me out. I was aware of her plan, but she had no idea what was coming for her. One day, I came home from work and saw my stuff packed in my room. Instead of being upset, I was amused. I said, hey, Julie, why is my stuff packed and waiting in my room? Are we going on vacation? Don't act so smart, Emily. I hope you remember my words. 
she snapped back. I told you that once you turned 17, I would make you leave. Well, now it's time for you to go. I've decided to be nice and pack your things to make it easier for you. You want to kick me out of my house? I asked. Oh, no, Emily. This is my house, and I don't need to keep you here anymore. I'll deal with Jacob later, but you are definitely leaving. Julie had a smug look on her face. She was happy with herself, already thinking about what to do with my room. But I said, not so fast, Julie. Karma is coming for you. I calmly took some papers from my bag and gave them to her. She looked confused, so I smirked and said, I think you should look at these papers first, Julie. I've been meaning to give them to you for a while. It's good you mentioned eviction today. It reminded me of these documents. What are these papers? Why do I need to read them? She asked. Why don't you take a look and find out? I replied. Julie sat down and started to read the papers I had given her. At first, she looked confused. Then her face changed to shock and disbelief. She looked at me, then back at the papers. Her expression turned angry. Is this an eviction notice in my name? What the hell, Emily, what does this mean? She asked. It means I want you out of my house in a month. You know, the usual thing an eviction notice means, I said. You can't serve me eviction papers. You can't do that. This is my house, and I'm the only one who can kick people out, she yelled. Um, no, Julie. This is my house and always has been. My dad was just a caretaker who held it for me until I turned 17. Now that I'm 17, the house is mine. I recently finished the paperwork, I explained. No, 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 that's impossible. Jacob can't just give you this house. This is our marital property, and he can't give it to you without asking me, she protested. How is this marital property, Julie? Dad had this house long before you were around. I guess he didn't tell you that it belonged to my maternal grandparents. They left it to me and had Dad take care of it until I was old enough, I said. I turned 17 just a few weeks ago. No, 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 you must be lying to me. This can't be true. You're trying to scam me and kick me out of the house. Wait till your father hears about this. He will kick you out instead, Julie yelled. She made the mistake of calling my father downstairs, forgetting she never asked him if she could kick me out. Even if the house belonged to him, she should have asked. She knew he would say no, so she tried to do it behind his back. In her rush, she forgot this detail and decided to involve Dad. I wasn't complaining. It was better for me this way. Dad came downstairs to see what all the yelling was about. He said, Whoa, calm down, Julie. Why are you screaming like that? What's wrong? Why wouldn't I be screaming? Your daughter is making wild claims again. She says this house belongs to her, and she's kicking me out, Julie shouted. Dad turned to me and asked, Emily, what is going on? I need to know the truth. I knew Dad would ask for my side. He's a good father and knows his wife can be very mean. He always listens to both sides before taking action, which Julie hated. She wanted him to always side with her no matter who was right. They fought about this a lot, but Dad wanted to be fair to everyone. That's why he asked for my side too. I explained, Julie called me down and said she was kicking me out. She told me I couldn't stay in her house anymore. I knew she was planning this because I overheard her talking on the phone. So I decided to kick her out instead. I gave her an eviction notice. Dad was shocked and turned to Julie. What the hell, Julie? Who gave you permission to try and kick my daughter out? You never discussed this with me. Why am I hearing about this now? Julie realized she had made a mistake. She was so upset by the eviction notice that she forgot she'd be caught. I saw her panic for a moment, 
Then she turned hostile and defensive like she always does. She snapped, your daughter is already an adult, Jacob. She turned 17 and we let her stay in the house for a month without paying rent. Most parents kick their kids out when they turn 17. We need to make Emily learn to live on her own and become responsible. That's for me to decide, Julie. You are not and never have been her parent. You didn't even help with anything related to Emily. How did you think it was okay to decide when to kick out my daughter? Dad said, You were being unfair, Jacob. All these years, I put up with your favoritism because Emily was a teenager. But now she needs to go. I won't let her stay in my house anymore. Who said this is your house? Which deed shows this house? Is in your name. Well, it's your place, so I have equal rights to it. Since I am your wife, this is my house too. I won't allow Emily here anymore. She needs to go. This is not your house. And even if it was, you have no right to it. This is Emily's house, and it's in her name. Julie went pale when she heard that. She didn't expect my dad to agree with me and say the house belonged to me. She lived in her own world where everything was hers just because she said so. Hearing otherwise was a big shock for her. She started to cry and said, Why would you say such a thing, Jacob? Because the house belongs to Emily, I'm just telling the truth. What's wrong with that? You gave Emily the house without talking to me. How could you do this, Jacob? I'm your wife. You should have discussed this with me. I am not okay with this. You had no problem going behind my back and trying to kick my daughter out. Why can't I do the same, Julie? Talk about double standards. There was nothing to discuss. This house was always meant for Emily. I was just the trustee who took care of it until she turned 17. The house was transferred to her name recently. Julie finally understood that we were telling the truth. Dad even offered to show her the papers if she needed proof. She was in too much shock to say anything coherent. She just said, you deceived me, Jacob. I thought the house was yours. You lied to me. This is not fair. I never lied to you, Julie. You never asked whose house this was. When we got married, we signed a prenup that said our personal assets stay personal. Oh my God, this can't be true. You should have told me, Jacob. Now Emily is throwing us out. Look at how ungrateful your daughter is, Jacob. I'm not throwing you out, Julie. That's just for you. You won't get to live in my house anymore. I might have let you stay, but after you tried to kick me out, I changed my mind. You're the one who has to leave. If you kick me out, your dad will follow too. We're a couple. He won't leave his wife. My father laughed out loud. He had been thinking about leaving Julie for a while, but he wasn't sure. Today made the decision easy for him. He said, actually, no, Julie, I'm not following you. I will stay here and take care of my daughter. I've been thinking about divorce for a while, and what you did today sealed the deal. I'll be filing tomorrow. Be ready for it. Wait, are you going to divorce me? You want to leave me for your daughter? You can't do that. Yes, I can, Julie. Did you think I'd forgive you for tormenting my daughter for four years? Absolutely not. I thought you might change, but I see now you'll always be toxic. I don't want someone like that in my or my daughter's life. Julie stepped back as if she had been hurt. She never expected a divorce so soon. My dad is usually a quiet man who doesn't do anything drastic. This was very unlike him. He was mad and you could see it on his face. He didn't shout, but his tone showed how angry he was. This made Julie even more anxious. She started arguing with my dad, and I decided to leave them and go to my room. Dad and Julie fought for an hour, with Julie shouting and crying while my father calmly explained his reasons. After the argument, Dad came to my room. 
He seemed a bit sad and wouldn't look me in the eye. He sat down and said, Emily, I know I need to apologize to you. I'm sorry, dear. I should have done a better job of protecting you from Julie. I thought being fair and avoiding fights would make things better. I was wrong and made things worse for you. You have to apologize. Dad, I know you loved Julie, and she wasn't like this when you married her. People change, and it can take time to understand these changes. Wow, you've really grown up. I wish I had handled things differently. I brought a mad woman into our lives. Well, what's done is done. I forgive you, Dad. You tried your best, and I'm not upset. Do you really want to divorce Julie? I won't be mad if you don't. I would understand. Girl, I'm not living with that crazy woman anymore. I'm done. Her true colors shocked me too much to act sooner. I don't want her in my life anymore. I had a feeling something was wrong with Julie, which is why I made the prop. I was worried she'd mess up your future and cause money problems, so I thought this was the best way. See, you did think about me, too. You deserve to be happy, Dad. That's all I want. If Julie doesn't mean anything to you anymore, it's best to separate. I spent a lot of time assuring my dad that he was not a bad parent. He did a lot for me, and I needed to make him believe that, too. I won't lie, I was super happy that my dad was finally getting rid of that crazy woman, Julie. She wasn't the right person for him and shouldn't stay married to him after everything she did over the years. The talk with my dad went well, and he went to the guest room to sleep that night. I finally felt peaceful knowing that Julie would soon be out of our lives for good. It felt great to teach her a lesson. I hope she would remember this for the rest of her life. The real surprise came the next morning when I found Julie acting way too nice and caring towards me. She was in the kitchen making me breakfast and acting like I was the most important person to her. Even Dad was giving her a strange look and looked at me with confusion. When breakfast was over, I said, Thanks for breakfast, Julie, but you don't have to do this anymore. I can make my own food as I have for the last seven years. No need to change things all of a sudden. What nonsense, Emily. I'm happy to do this for you. Eating together can bring us closer as a family, she replied. What's the point? We won't be a family much longer. You should have done this years ago. It's too late now. Oh, come on, Jacob. Don't be so hard on me. I'm trying. I can make this work. I'll start being a better parent to Emily. We'll be the best mother-daughter do ever, right, Emily? I knew what Julie was trying to do. She was cornered and spent the night coming up with a plan. I knew better than to trust her. Looking at Dad, I could see you wasn't going to trust her either. He just looked a bit amused. Since Julie was waiting for my response, I said, I don't think so, Julie. First of all, I'm 17 and don't need a new parent. I pay my own bills and will be off to college soon. Secondly, you are not and will never be my mother. That word doesn't suit you at all. Emily, I'm sorry for being so mean to you before. You need to give people a chance. We could be a happy family if you just give me a chance. It will also help strengthen my marriage with your dad. Dad replied, Julie, you have a few months left of this marriage. I don't know what you're trying to strengthen. If it's an attempt to stay in this house, I'm sorry to say it won't work. You're being kicked out, and I'm going to divorce you anyway. The damage is already done. There's no point in trying to act all innocent and sorry now. I know you better than that, Julie. She saw that her new plan wasn't working, and it seemed like she had run out of options. Julie couldn't threaten to ruin Dad financially, because of the prenup she had signed when they got married. She had no leverage left. Her only remaining tactic was to beg and cry, hoping for some sympathy. She started crying hysterically, pleading with me not to kick her out. She begged me to talk to Dad and ask him to give her another chance. She then turned to Dad, 
begging him to be more forgiving and to reconsider his decision to divorce her. The entire day turned into a long, painful ordeal with Julie begging and pleading for mercy. Since both Dad and I were off work that day, we had no choice but to endure her desperate attempts to change our minds. She followed us around the house, tears streaming down her face and her voice trembling with desperation. Dad had to step out for a while to contact his lawyer and start the divorce process. Julie's pleas continued even when Dad was gone as she tried to convince me to intervene on her behalf. When Dad returned, he was visibly tired of the drama. He informed Julie that he had already taken steps to file for divorce. Julie's face went pale when she heard this. She realized that her attempts to sway us were futile. The next few days were filled with more of Julie's emotional breakdowns. She would alternate between crying and trying to put on a cheerful face, hoping to win us over with kindness, but it was too late for that. Within a week, Julie received the divorce papers. Dad's lawyer had them delivered to her, and her reaction was a mix of shock and resignation. The realization that her marriage was over seemed to hit her hard. She stopped her begging and crying after receiving the papers, understanding that her efforts were in vain. The cold reality of her situation started to set in. Dad and I sat her down and explained that she would need to find a job if she wanted to have a place to live and afford a lawyer for her divorce proceedings. Julie, still clinging to the hope that she could somehow fix things, promised she would find a way to support herself. She was convinced that she could change our minds if she tried hard enough. She kept saying that she would prove herself and make things right, but we both knew it was too late. As the days passed, Julie's presence in the house became more and more unbearable. She would try to engage in conversations, acting as if nothing had happened but it was clear that neither Dad nor I wanted to have anything to do with her anymore. The tension in the house was palpable, and every interaction with her felt forced and uncomfortable. Finally, the month came to an end, and Julie was still holding on to the hope that we would let her stay. She kept her belongings packed, waiting for a last-minute change of heart from us. But when the time came, there was no reprieve. We had been clear about our intentions from the start, and now it was time to follow through. Julie was given a firm deadline to leave the house. Dad and I stood by watching as she gathered her things. She tried one last time to plead with us, her eyes filled with tears and desperation, but we remained steadfast. Julie's belongings were taken out, and she was escorted out of the house. She looked back at us one last time, hoping for a sign of mercy, but there was none. As the door closed behind her, a wave of relief washed over me. The house felt lighter, freer, without the constant tension and negativity that Julie brought. Dad and I shared a moment of quiet understanding, knowing that this was the right decision. We had endured enough, and now it was time to move forward, leaving Julie and her manipulations behind. She made a fuss when we told her to leave, but after Dad threatened her with more legal trouble, she left crying. I heard she moved in with a friend because her own family doesn't want her around anymore. When she left, she took all the negativity with her, and the house finally felt like home again. It's been more than three years since all this happened. I'm now in college, which is conveniently close to home. Dad successfully divorced Julie and has started dating again. He says he's not looking to settle down, but just wants some companionship from time to time. Life at home has been peaceful since Julie left, and Dad and I have grown closer. We often laugh about the drama that once filled our lives and how much better things are now. As for Julie, the last I heard, she moved into a small flat with several roommates. She's struggling to make ends meet because she doesn't have many skills or qualifications. Julie is working a minimum wage job and is just barely getting by. She's living a very different life from the one she tried to control in our house. 
I saw her from a distance at a grocery store a few months ago. She looked worn out and seemed to have aged a lot. Her hair was messy, and she had dark circles under her eyes. She looked nothing like the confident woman who tried to take over our lives. It was clear that life had taken its toll on her, and she was no longer the powerful person she once pretended to be. Seeing her like that made me realize that karma had caught up with her. She tried to manipulate us and take control, but in the end, she ended up with nothing. I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief, knowing that she was no longer a part of our lives and that we were finally free from her negativity. The house, once filled with tension and arguments, now felt warm and welcoming. My dad and I have been able to move on with our lives. We often talk about how much better things are now and how grateful we are to have each other. Dad has even started taking up new hobbies, like gardening and cooking, things he never had time for when Julie was around. We've created a peaceful and happy home, one that is full of love and laughter. Julie's departure has been a blessing for both of us and has allowed us to rebuild our lives and focus on what truly matters. We no longer have to deal with her constant drama and manipulation. Instead, we've been able to enjoy the simple pleasures of life, like spending time together and making new memories. As for Julie, I hope she has learned from her mistakes. Life has not been easy for her, and I believe that she has finally realized that you can't build happiness on lies and deceit. The last time I heard anything about her, she was still struggling to make ends meet and living a very difficult life. She's working hard to survive, and I think she has finally understood the consequences of her actions. I don't wish anything bad on her. I hope that she can find a way to turn her life around and learn to live with honesty and integrity. Perhaps the struggles she's facing now will teach her valuable lessons and help her become a better person in the end. Everyone deserves a chance to change and improve their lives. Looking back, I'm grateful for the challenges we faced. They made us stronger and brought us closer together. My dad and I have become a great team, and we've learned to appreciate each other even more. We've built a life filled with love, respect, and understanding. And for that, I am truly thankful. Julie's story serves as a reminder that trying to hurt others and take what isn't yours will only lead to your own downfall. It's important to live a life of kindness, honesty, and respect for others. I hope Julie has found some peace in her new life and has learned from the mistakes she made. As for us, we are happier than ever, and we know that no matter what challenges come our way, we can face them together with strength and love.